So the next step in this process was to coat the pattern in a thin layer of plaster. To achieve this, I used some jib all-purpose jointing compound. I mixed it in with enough water so that it would run off the brush. As you can see, this has been done in a sealable plastic container, so I can use the plaster again and again without it setting. I also pop the brush up on a piece of polystyrene in the plastic container so it doesn't need cleaning between uses. As you can see here, I'm marking out some expanded polystyrene foam so I can cut the sprue out. The reason I'm using expanded polystyrene foam is because I have a whole bunch of it, and also it is less dense than the extruded foam, meaning as the sprue it'll burn away more easily. This in turn will take less heat out of the molten aluminium so it can fill the mould and burn away the extruded foam more effectively. And yes, this would be a whole lot easier with a hot wire cutter, and I did have one prior to this take, but my $4 Chinese hot wire cutter decided to pack a sad and just stop working conveniently. As you can see, the sprue is actually quite rough after being cut with the craft knife. Also, I wasn't too concerned about the surface finish on the sprue, as it is just sacrificial and would be getting cut off at a later date. I was quite surprised that all of the imperfections in the expanded polystyrene foam were actually captured in amazing detail. Here you can see a close-up of all the little foam beads making up the expanded polystyrene foam. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to the $14 Azito hot glue gun and the world's cheapest craft right hot glue sticks as they performed amazingly. With my limited budget knowing absolutely no bounds and there being small gaps between the sprue and the pattern, I had to figure out a way to seal these up prior to plastering. The solution was to grab a small scented candle from inside the house and break it up with a craft knife. With the small pieces, I could smush them into all of the gaps between the pattern and the sprue. Here are a few close-ups of the waxed fillets around the sprue. Watching me undertake the tedious task of plastering the pattern, you can see the consistency of the plaster coming off the end of the brush. In a perfect world, I would have just mixed up a whole tub of plaster and dipped the entire part. It would have given a more consistent coating of plaster. Also, it would have taken a fraction of the time. The reason I didn't do this was because I don't know how many more of these I'm going to make and having 40 to 50 litres of plaster sitting around in a drum isn't very handy. Off camera, I applied a second coat to get any areas that were either thin or that I missed on the initial application. Here you can see the crucible in the furnace at about 880 odd degrees Celsius prior to pouring the part. The crucible being made of six millimeter steel and yes, I know that it's frowned upon, but it only took about 10 minutes to make. At a later date, I might buy a large graphite crucible. Here you can see me carrying out the pour. Here you can see I'm wearing all leather safety equipment, and I have a face shield handily plonked on my head, not up to too much. During the pour, I was quite worried that the extruded foam was not burning away fast enough, and the aluminium was going to freeze, and all my effort was going to be wasted. But when I placed the crucible down, I did notice it was almost empty. So I crossed my fingers and waited 15 to 20 minutes before kicking the bucket over and checking out the part. To my amazement, I was actually quite ecstatic that the part turned out better than I had hoped. Ignore the overflowing aluminium that set fire to the plastic bucket. Other than that, everything went perfectly fine and I extinguished the fire with a bit of sand. Here you can see the part as it came out of the sand. If you enjoyed the content, like and subscribe, and tune in for the next step, which will be machining the part and test fitting all of the internal components.